we're learning what caused the deadly Air India plane to crash just 30 seconds after takeoff last month. I don't I don't agree with Captain Steve. Um, I, I, um, the Wall Street Journal report I found was very um, was not very good. So it's uh, it really, really does require an intentional action. The, the airplane is incredibly complex, right? If you ever looked inside the airplane infrastructure, you would see an absolute jungle of electrical, electronic, computer systems. The switches have been known to, it's called mimicking, switch mimic, which means that something could happen to a circuit that actually could cause an indication that something was moved when in fact the switch wasn't moved. Well, much has been said about those fuel control switches on Air India 171. And what we want to do in this video today is describe to you exactly how the fuel control switches work. And I want to do a shout out at the beginning of this video to Stig Aviation. If you want to see a really good explanation from an airplane mechanic on how the actual physical switches on the 787 operate, go check out Stig Aviation. It's a 30 minute or so video uh, with detail about how it works. Now, I'm going to explain to you uh, portions of that uh, today on this video, and I want to get into discussing uh, what can and can't happen with these fuel control switches. Um, exactly how do they work? There's been a lot of conjecture out there about things I think people wish would have happened to them or how they hope they would work, but wishing and hoping are not reality. The reality of how these switches work is very simple, uh, and they're designed to be a very simple operation on purpose so that they don't fail at the most critical portions of flight, like right after rotate. So, for instance, the fuel control switch, and let's take a look at the fuel control switch here and, and it operating. You can see, and one of the, I've heard many pundits out there saying there's no way that those fuel control switches can move from run to cutoff in less than a second or around a second. That's exactly how they run. Uh, th when we shut down the engines in every flight, I go from cutoff to run, and I go from run to cutoff. Now, when we're starting the engines after we push back, I instruct my first officer to start both engines. And so he'll grab that fuel control switch. He'll grasp it, pull it out. It's spring-loaded. He'll put it in the run position and let go of it. Now, I took a lot of time to do that. The actual doing of it goes like this. Boom. Boom, that's about how long it takes, about a second in between each one. The reverse is true as well. When we get to the gate and I set the parking brake and I say chop, chop, usually to the engines, the, my co-pilot will reach over and go boom, boom, just like that takes about a second for that whole operation to take place. They, he or she has pulled out on the spring, pulled it over the detent and let it go. And then it's spring loaded back into the, the cutoff detent. So that's the physical part of the switches. They can be moved in one second. They're uh, detent, and you can look at a picture here now of uh, one of the uh, fuel control switches in question. You can see a little metal nib at the very bottom of the switch, uh, and that holds it either in the cutoff position or on the other side, it holds it in the run position. And it'll stay there, it will not move. That spring is rather tight in there. It's, it takes a little bit of effort to pull it up over and down, but once it gets in that position, there's no vibration, there's no inadvertent touching of it that's going to move it. If I were to somehow you know, drop something on it or, or hit it with my hand, it's not going to move because I have to grasp it, pull it up over that detent and release it. That's the only way it goes from run to cut off or cut off to run. It's purely a mechanical switch. And that purely mechanical switch operates a relay. And that's a physical, it's a real relay. It provides 28 volt DC, and actually it only uses 14 volts of DC, but it's direct current from the switch I just moved to a relay. And the relay only has two positions. It's either open or it's closed. When the relay is closed, it provides that same 28 volt DC to three different valves. And those valves are the spar valve, the fuel management valve, and the high pressure shutoff valve. All three of those valves open up at that time and allow fuel from the tanks in my airplane, which there's a boost pump, a very strong boost pump that's providing pumped pressure, positive pressure of that fuel through that now open line. So the, again, physical switch opens a, provides electricity, not a digital signal, but actual 28 volt electricity to a relay that then closes. Once that relay closes, it provides that same 28 volt DC to all three of those valves and all three open. 
Then and only then can I start my engines. If that stays, if that switch stays in the run position, those three valves stay open. It's a closed loop system. There are no other inputs into that system. There's no digital signal that gets sent to them by mistake or any other way that could close those. It's its own little simple system. Let me show you how simple the system is. Because uh, as I was researching uh, this video, I thought, you know, when I was a kid, I had one of those um, early electronic sets and uh, it had a battery source, like a battery on an airplane or a battery on your car. And this is direct current. This is DC. And they had little switches that you could operate and you could turn them on or off, just like the fuel control switch on an airplane, right? It's a little more sophisticated, but inside this switch is a relay. And it's a physical relay that either is open or closed. Once it's closed, when I push the switch in a minute, you'll see the power that's sitting in here all the time. Now, then once it's closed, that relay, it then provides it to whatever mechanism I want to operate. In this case, I've got a little blinky light that I'm going to turn on here in just a second. This could be a fan. This could be a, some other mechanism that goes back and forth. It could be fuel control valves that either open or close. Very simple operators, those fuel control switches or valves, they're either open or they're closed. So let me show you how this works. If this were the fuel control switch and I took it from cut off to run, it would be the same as me doing this. And all that electricity now comes right through to this uh, little light, or in this, in the case of the airplane, it would go through to the fuel control uh, valves. All three of them would get 28 volt DC and they would open and they would stay in that position throughout the entire flight until I get to the gate, set the parking brake and move those fuel control switches from run back to cutoff. At that point, the relay opens, the 28 volt DC is no longer supplied to my valves and they all three close on their own. And both systems on both engines are separate from each other. There is no other input to those systems. Now, let's look at the electricity path and describe exactly how this works, because there are some other things that are related to the operation of those three fuel control valves that monitor the the uh, the running of the engine. And there's been a lot of talk uh, recently about the FADEC and about um, uh, the EECS and so forth. So I'm gonna show you a schematic here. Let's talk about the RDC and the EECS because on this illustration I've got here for you, you can see up in the upper uh, top of the, the page, uh, something that's called the RDC. Um, people have been talking about that. They've been talking about the FADEC. They've been talking about the EECS. All three of those systems are designed to govern the uh, a potential overboost of an engine. None of them are connected directly to those three valves or any one of those three fuel shutoff valves. Uh, they're, they're not connected at all, so there's no errant signal that could go from them to command any one of those valves to close off. Again, those valves are in a closed system that can only be operated by the 28 volt direct current coming from the battery through that relay when it's closed. And that is only controlled by the position of the fuel cutoff switches, and that's it. And there are two separate systems. There's the left engine and there's the right engine. There is no interconnection between the two of them at all. So for anybody to, to believe that there was some sort of errant signal that came from the FADEC somehow in a back root way to send a digital signal or any sort of signal to any one of those valves to close, that's simply not how the system works. And you would have to believe that it happened on both engines one second from each other right after rotate. Um, that's just a bridge too far for me. It's just, that's, that's simply not the way the system works. Now, I'm not assigning any motives here, anything else. You hear me clearly on this, my friends. I'm just explaining to you how the fuel control switches work. They provide 28 volt DC electricity to that relay, and that relay provides that same 28 volt DC to those three valves. And they're either open or they're closed. Very simple system. Now, what if the whole airplane were to lose electrical power? Would those would that relay open? No, it would not. 
Why? Because it's direct current coming directly from the battery of the aircraft through something called the hot battery bus. Think of it like the battery on your car. If for some reason you were to lose total electrical power on your car, your battery would still have power. It wouldn't drain immediately. And that's the system is designed this way on purpose. You always want to have 28 volt DC going to those three valves to keep them open to provide fuel for the engines. Because the worst thing that could happen is if you had a total electrical failure and and both engines flamed out because you designed the system poorly. And how do I know that? Air India went into the simulator right after Air India 171 crash. They rotated off the ground and they, they programmed the computer to be a total electrical failure on the airplane. The engines both kept running. Why? Because you can't program the battery to die. The battery still had a charge in it and it was going to run for probably 30 to 40 more minutes. So those valves are going to stay open for at least that long. They're not going to immediately um, close because they have no power. They have that 20 volt DC power source. So it's a direct uh, current fail safe system, we call it. So if you were to lose total electrical AC failure on the airplane, uh, all the generators were to go bad, you didn't have any power whatsoever, they would still fail to the open position because that 28 volt DC is coming straight from the airplane's battery and there's nothing in the system other than the fuel control switches that can cut off that 28 volt DC to those um, valves. So um, direct current now is the key to all of this. Let's turn our attention to the AAIB uh, bulletin or the uh, report that came out because they talk in here, I think it's on page three or four, uh, about the uh, bulletin. Uh, that was issued about the fuel control switches. So let me just read this to you because it's very important. An airworthiness bulletin is not the same as an airworthiness directive. A directive is like a recall. It's something that is malfunctioning and has to be replaced and has to be replaced quickly. A bulletin is just an information item. Hey, guys, if you want to and you got time, take a look at this, but it's really not that big a deal. And it was an airworthiness bulletin that was associated with the 737 airplanes, not the 787. However, let's be honest with this discussion. The 737 fuel control switches are the same as on the 787. And it says that right here in the bulletin. So I'll pick up from the, the uh, sentence that reads, the fuel control switch design, including the locking feature, which is the spring. That's what it's talking about when it says the locking feature is similar on various Boeing airplane models, including gives you a part number, which was fitted on the Boeing 787 uh, and on this particular aircraft. So the one that we're talking about that crashed had the same type of switch that was on the 737. All right, let's keep reading. As per the information from Air India, the suggested inspections were not carried out uh, uh, as the uh, bulletin uh, would direct it, because it was advisory and it was not mandatory. The scrutiny of maintenance records revealed that the, now read this very carefully, you might want to underline it, the throttle control module was replaced on this aircraft, the one that crashed in 2019 and again in 2023. Now, what is the throttle control module? It is, let's go back to that picture of the schematic. It's that entire unit, it includes the throttles, the reversers, the fuel control switches, a couple of other devices. And why would they replace that whole unit if there was some question about the fuel control switches? Because that's the way they do it. If there's something wrong with the throttles, if there's something wrong with the reversers, maybe they're a little sticky or somebody spilled something in them and they, they don't try to fix one component in place, they'll pull the entire thing out and they'll put an entire new one in while they take the old one back to a, a rehab shop or a refurb shop and then they fix it and then they put it back into service once it's fixed. They don't try to fix it on the airplane. They simply replace the entire unit. So what we're reading from this bulletin is that on that airplane that crashed, that entire throttle control module was replaced twice, once in 2019, once in 2023. We have to keep reading because there's some real important information here. However, the reason for the replacement was not linked to the fuel control switch. They, they removed both of those throttle units, not because of the fuel control switch. So what we're, we know from this now is that there was nothing wrong with the fuel control switches either in 2019 or in 2023 or the day of this crash. There has, and it continues on, there has been no defect reported pertaining to the fuel control switches since 2023 on this 
particular airplane, VT-ANB. That's the, the uh, tail number of that airplane. So there's never been a single write-up about any of the fuel control switches. And in fact, as we follow the timeline now of the AAIB report, shortly after rotate, and I mean within a second, of rotate. Uh, in their wording, both fuel control switches, one second apart from each other, left to right, were transitioned from run to cutoff. That is the actual physical switch. Now, let me be clear on this. They didn't say that the engines failed and then the fuel control switches were transitioned to cutoff. They're saying that the fuel control switches were transitioned to cutoff and then the engines failed. So then they begin to give you a second by second timeline of the engines failing, spooling down, so forth. It was approximately just under 10 seconds when both fuel control switches were placed back to the run position. I'm assuming that the other pilot did that, but again, that's an assumption on my part, but it was a full almost 10 seconds before they were placed back into the run position. It says, according to the report, that both engines lit off again one engine started to produce some positive thrust. The other never did stop the decay, but it did light off and not enough thrust for them to arrest the descent and they crashed into the buildings off the end of the runway. So it's very important that we stick with what's actually written in the AAIB report. Air India actually, after the crash, inspected all of the fuel control switches on all of their airplanes and they found no defect in any of them whatsoever. So again, the idea that somehow these switches could have vibrated into the um, uh, cutoff position is just, it's ridiculous. It, it's not, there's no basis in fact on that. And my evidence for that, the strongest evidence possible is the actual switches that were on that airplane because according to the report they were placed back into the run position and then after the crash and all of that tremendous g-force in the crash and the fireball and everything else we've got a picture right here of both of those fuel control switches still firmly in the run position it's inconceivable that they somehow 60 seconds earlier than that vibrated into the cutoff position on their own they were transitioned there, and the only way they can be transitioned there is by picking them up and placing them in that cutoff position. Now, having said all that, I understand the sensitivities with that statement. There's things that we hope for, there's things that we wish didn't happen. I'm not saying that this was intentional. Uh, at, at, at any level that we can come in on this, it had to be one of the pilots that transitioned them to cutoff. Was there a good reason for that to happen? I can't think of one. I can't think of any emergency that was so bad that you would go to cut off and leave them there for 10 seconds. But the facts speak for themselves. The fuel control switches, which are mechanical, were moved to the cutoff position, left there for almost 10 seconds before they were put back into the run position. It wasn't enough time for the engines to light off and get enough positive thrust to arrest the descent as the airplane crashed into the buildings. So when bad things happen, I think, I do, and I think you're like me. I think we search, we search for answers, and we were. I think all of us are naturally hopeful people. We we want we want to think the absolute best, and I absolutely want to think the absolute best. Um, having said that, I wanted to clarify this because the fuel control switches make a huge difference. Understanding how they work, and more importantly, not how they don't work is important for this discussion going forward. It gives us clarity on the fact that when you put those things to run, it provides electric current to a valve or a relay that closes. That relay provides that same electric current, DC current, to three valves that either open or when we go to cutoff, it opens that relay and they, it, they close. That's it. It's a simple system. There's no other input to those systems at all. So these switches moved from run to cutoff. We may never know why. Uh, we do know how, but the why is going to escape us uh, and we may never get an answer to that. But I wanted to clarify exactly how these fuel control switches work so that there's not any misinformation out there um, going forward about a very simple switch that operated according to its design. Now you know, I'm Captain Steve, fly safe.